one question. What happens when you combine breaking and flamenco together? When this timer ends, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. And after that, I will be delving deep into each culture, finding the comparisons, as well as giving you the context into how this collaboration even happened and came to be. And what bridged these two opposite, or not so opposite, art forms into one finished product. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. And that was our final product. Now let's delve into the cultures, history, and how this all came to be. But first, let me introduce you. This is Audrey. She's the one who created the video and creates all the photos and videos for Fluvon. This is Maria. She's the flamenco dancing queen. Okay, now that you all caught the speed, let's go over what we're gonna do next. Now we have to go interview Audrey and Maria, so I can actually make this video. Ha <laughs> boom, boom, shh. So let's get our stuff and head to Fluvog headquarters. <laughs> See you soon, Fluvog. Success. All right, after hours, months, and days of research, after having monkeys working around the clock, getting all the conclusions, finding all the facts. You know I'm kidding. I wouldn't hurt any monkeys. But we've got conclusions, we've got facts, we've got comparisons. Let's get right into it. Breakdance, b-boying, breaking, it's got a lot of names on one side, flamenco on the other, and bromenco in the middle, which will represent a common ground. It's a culture. This is the first common ground that we find between both of these art forms. Defining it as a dance form simply does not do it any justice. It's a lifestyle. It's not something you do, it's something you are. Both of these cultures have many elements to them. Flamenco has cante, the song, baile, their dance form, palmas, their hand clapping, toque, the guitarist, and haleos, their calls of engagement. Little footnote, if my pronunciation is complete trash, which I'm sure it is, it's because I've truly taken zero Spanish and I do not know the proper pronunciation. I'm using Google Translate, but I wanted to be as authentic as possible, so I'm trying to give you guys the proper knowledge. Okay, bye. Breaking is a dance form of hip hop culture. So the elements of hip hop culture are breaking as its dance form, graffiti writing as its form of written expression, master of ceremonies or MCing as its spoken expression, and disc jockey DJing as its musical expression. All these elements combined is what creates their culture. No single one makes them better or worse. It's all a piece of the puzzle. Without one, it would be incomplete, but together, it's a beautiful masterpiece. The lotus flower, poverty, oppression, and hardships are all things that stem from the roots of these art forms. Just as a beautiful lotus flower grows out of the mud, these cultures were born out of ugly times, where they were created by people who had very little and sometimes had nothing. So they turned this culture into their everything. The truest form of these cultures is that you're staying true to yourself and that you are representing yourself as authentically as possible through your movement. It's not about who puts on the most, 
traditional mask. It's about who represents and expresses themselves the most authentically under the mask. Styles. There is no one style that makes up flamenco or breakdancing. Each has vast amounts of different styles within the culture, varying from traditionalists to ones who walk a thin line. Just as a tree has roots that run deep and limbs that grow tall and wild, so you have the styles from the underground to the most enlightened, to the powerful and the weak, the beautiful and the messy. There is a place for them all, and they are all a part of the same tree. Both have freestyle circles, ciphers for breaking, and bolerias por fiesta for flamenco. These are where you can really experience the physical connections that the dancers use to communicate. Energy. Both are extremely high energy cultures. I understood this for breaking because I'm a very high energy b-boy, but I never realized how captivating flamenco dancers energy was. To put it simply, I was instantly engrossed in how their rawness and self-expression was so similar to breakers. Both have very renowned motherlands. Andalusia, Spain for flamenco and Bronx, New York City for breaking. Physical connections. Both art forms communicate and connect through their physical movements. No matter what language you speak, even if you live on opposite ends of the world and can't understand a single word the other is saying, it doesn't matter because when one understands another through their physical connection, it goes deeper than words. Woo! Absolutely stunning day here in Vancouver, BC. I wanted to give you guys one last look into how this collaboration came to be before I get washed off of my balcony. Let's get into it. So Audrey saw Maria perform, so then she built that connection. Then I was looking for local content creators to collaborate with, and then I saw one of Audrey's videos. So I obviously DM'd her because the video was sick. After that, Maria and I jumped right into rehearsal, which is where things went, well... Hey! <laughs> to say this collaboration was comfortable and easy would be wrong. So let's explore how this collaboration was a little bit uncomfortable. I'm getting washed off! We found out quickly one thing breaking and flamenco definitely do not have in common. Breaking usually goes by counts of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Usually hitting the twos, four, six, eights, all the even counts. And flamenco tends to have tons of different rhythms. So Maria was actually hitting a lot of fives and sevens. That one's hard for me, but okay. Which made us collaborating very interesting. It's like you hit it, I missed it, I missed yeah. it. Is that too, is that too hard for both of us? A little better. Okay, let's just see if we're on the right track. Now, as hard as we tried to match our rhythms eloquently, Audrey had the fun job of trying to match them in post productions. As well as mixing the raw sounds Maria was making with her movement to create a cinematic package. Now, where does Fluvog come into play apart from Audrey working for him? Well, let's delve into this last piece of the puzzle. John Fluvog opened his first Vancouver-based John Fluvog store in 1973, which I thought to be quite interesting, considering that's the day that hip hop was born. How about that for a quick one, too? One of the sayings of John Fluvog is literally, unique souls for unique souls, which I found to be perfectly fitting, considering our unique souls were gonna be in his unique souls. <laughs> John himself is a funny, unique, creative, weird individual. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Get out of here. With taglines like know you're weird and even measuring their content by the is it flu vlog enough scale. So we agreed to represent his new shoes after we learned how to dance in them. Have you ever seen flares in flu vlogs? Now you have. So long story short, if it wasn't for each part of this puzzle, you would have never seen what you just saw. And personally for me, this is something I've never seen before. I've never created something on this level or magnitude before, so I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, I cherish them all. Comment, like, subscribe, and hopefully you learned about these opposite or not so opposite art forms coming together to create Bramenko. Peace! <laughs>